Good evening, and thank you for tuning in to our Halloween edition of Wildcast. I'm Michael Hernandez. And I'm Janae Gonzalez. The University of Arizona celebrated its 102nd homecoming, sparking off the week with the traditional lighting of a mountain. Wildcast reporter Sierra Burke attended the celebration to get enlightened. <laughs> Alumni, students, and the 2016 Homecoming Corps are all gathered here for the annual Lighting of the A to kick off this week's homecoming festivities. Former students, along with their families, are dancing with Wilbur and Wilma and enjoying this UA tradition. Right here is where the crowd will watch the A light up the night sky. Bobcat Senior Honorary, um, they're selected a distinct few by the Alumni Association, a few other people, a very prestigious group. They light the, the mountain up there every single year. They're the ones that do it. They're up there with just the police and the fire crew, so no media, no one else. Very, very selective. Just basically kicks off homecoming. Good way to celebrate, bring in students, alumni, and people from the Tucson community. So. <laughs> Homecoming weekend began with the crowning of the homecoming court, followed by a bonfire. Wildcast reporter Mish Takala was there to see who was crowned king and queen. Current students, faculty members, and alumni gathered for the lighting of the bonfire along with the crowning of the homecoming queen and king late Friday night. The university's organization, Bobcat Senior Honorary, which was founded in 1922, by the UA Alumni Association coordinated all things homecoming and is dedicated to preserving the unity and welfare of the University of Arizona. During homecoming week, they are responsible for mall events, sponsorships, the bonfire, the parade, and of course, the homecoming court selections. Really the whole process, it's, we've been working on it for two months now, prepping, um, I'm preparing what I was saying tonight, I'm preparing for Bear Down Friday, and each day we've had Club Olympics, so we really haven't stopped for two months about with planning and now executing, and it's, it's been really exciting. This year's homecoming king was Bernie Aguirre, and the queen was no other than Jesse Roberts. Along with getting crowned at the Friday night bonfire, they are also recognized during the Saturday football game. In order to get nominated for the homecoming court, there are a few key steps that need to be taken. So a group on campus, it can be any group, and they um, just have to be nominated by them, and it costs... $25 to get nominated, and you can have anyone get nominated. You can do two people per organization. Reporting from Old Main for UATV, I'm Mish DiCarlo. People gathered on the U of A Mall Saturday afternoon to watch students and alumni march in the homecoming parade. Wildcast reporter Alexa Wheeler attended the parade and has the details. The parade started with the marching band playing the U of A Bear Down fight song. Wilbur and Wilma opened the parade. I got to talk to a 2013 alum chain gang member who came back to visit the U of A. He loved cheering on his fellow chain gang members in the parade. After the introduction of chain gang, homecoming court and Greek life followed them in the parade in cars and homemade floats. After the parade was over, everyone headed to the tailgate on the UA Mall where alum had a chance to sign their name under the year they graduated and socialize with each other and students while they grab a bite to eat. Reporting to you from the UA Mall with UATV, I'm Lex Wheeler. Alumni from the class of 1966 returned to campus for their 50th class reunion. While they were here, Wildcast reporter Sasha Fruhoff saw them get inducted into a special society and has a story. 
guys enjoy. On October 27th, the UA class of 1966 gathered at Old Main to reunite with their previous classmates. Alumni socialized, ate, and were inducted into the Silver and Sage Society. So the Silver and Sage Society is important because it engages the alumni who have graduated 50 years or more. So we're inducting the class of 1966 in their 50th reunion into the Silver and Sage Society, in addition to having people who have already gra graduated longer than that coming as well. Um, and it's important because it engages a group of people who have, like Bailey said, deep roots, bear down spirit, very invested in the university and it's great to have them be back on campus and a part of homecoming. Over 80 guests came to this event, many of which were alumni who came to celebrate with their previous classmates and get inducted into the Silver and Sage Society. Let's see what some of them had to say. Well, it is just so much fun, but it's also unreal to come to the realization that it's been 50 years since we graduated. I've seen a lot of people that I haven't seen in 50 years, but we were really, really good friends in college. So this is a very special time. Well, it's a, a lot bigger university today than it was back in my day. Uh, basically, that uh, stone wall that goes around the campus. The campus was in that back in those days. Uh, I made it through the university for about $5,000, room, board, uh, everything. The night ended with several guest speakers and a congratulatory applause for the newly inducted members. Reporting from the Silver and Sage Room for UATV, I'm Sasha Fruhoff. Coming up next, students toured some of the haunted buildings around campus. Plus, Halloween has people dressing up across the country tonight. Find out what events you can dress up for after trick-or-treating is over. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Toby Schmidt. And I'm Michael Hernandez. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Sarina Nacuarrate. And I'm Danielle Karp. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Max Alex. And I'm Jackie Kent. Welcome to Wildcast. Welcome. To welcome. And welcome. Welcome. And welcome to another edition of Wildcast. De los Muertos, or Day of the Dead this Tuesday, students from the U of A's Mexican-American Studies program are hosting this year's altar setup. This year's students' altars are dedicated to figures in social justice struggles and pop culture. The altar viewing will be from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the Cesar Chavez building. A procession from Chavez to the Rice East Tire Art Gallery is scheduled for 5.15 p.m. 
ones can take part in the All Souls procession this weekend. More than 150,000 people are expected to fill the streets of downtown Tucson for a two-mile procession. At the end of the walk, a large urn will be burned, filled with the offerings of the dead. The All Souls procession takes place Sunday from 4 to 10 p.m. Complete event details are at allsoulsprocession.org. Students and alumni took a tour of the U of A to hear ghost stories and legends from around campus. Wildcast reporter Paige Jones tagged along and has the details. Every year, the University of Arizona welcomes back former students and honors the school's existence by celebrating homecoming. However, this year, Homecoming Week is taking a spooky twist. The Student Alumni Ambassadors kicked off Haunted Homecoming by hosting a ghost tour event on the mall. Every October, we did a special one for Homecoming because it is Haunted Homecoming. Um, we have about six or seven stories around just a circle, small, tight circle of campus. I have worked here for about five years, and I've always wanted to do this ghost tour. And every year, I'm so busy around this time before Homecoming that it's too late. So this time, because I'm a transfer student, I, I actually received an invitation, and I signed up immediately. The student alumni ambassadors have been doing this event for six years. However, this year, with homecoming and Halloween just days apart, attendance exceeded expectations. I think it has a lot to do with it being the week of homecoming. Um, it's Halloween weekend. We typically try to do it close to Halloween. Um, but I think with homecoming, there might be a lot more people in town, and it's on a Wednesday, it's at 5.30, so it's a little bit more manageable than maybe later in the evening after dinner time. At the ghost tours, students, faculty, and members of the community were able to learn about the spooky side of Arizona's oldest university. Reporting at Old Main for UATV, this is Paige Jones. Dressing up in costumes doesn't have to end at Halloween. The ninth annual Tucson Comic Con is back in town this weekend to celebrate everything pop culture. It will be held at the Tucson Convention Center Friday through Sunday. Tickets are available online at the TCC website. So, Janae, did you have the chance to dress up for Halloween at all? I did, but um, admittedly, I did not get as creative as I have in years past. I was just a black cat. Like <laughs> very that. simple. How about you? What did you dress up as? Well, I think I got very creative this year, and oh I gosh. went as Willy Wonka. <laughs> so, oh, my God. I can picture I've got, that. I was handing oh, out geez. everlasting gobstoppers. I've got the top hat. I had it all. Did you have a nice suit and tie, too? Everything? Oh, I had the whole outfit. Wow. It was, yes. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Definitely well, better than my costume. If, if you come <laughs> with me, you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Oh, <laughs> God. Arizona football looked to get on the board in conference play during its homecoming game against Stanford. We'll have all the highlights for you along with the women's soccer and cross country after the break. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Toby Schmidt. And I'm Michael Hernandez. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Sarina Nafarrate. And I'm Danielle Karp. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Max. And I'm Jackie Kent. Welcome to Wildcast. Welcome. Welcome. And welcome. Welcome. And welcome to another edition of Wildcast. Okay. 
Hey Wildcats and welcome to Wildcats Sports. I'm Brandon Mejia in for Danielle Fork and here is your Wildcats Sports Recap. It was homecoming week as the Wildcats took on Stanford Saturday night hoping to get their first conference win. Sports reporter Simone McCarthy has the game recap. It was a big turnout Saturday night at the Arizona Stadium where U of A took on Stanford and celebrated Arizona's 99th homecoming game on campus. Stanford was able to show off what they can do offensively when McCaffrey is healthy. Dawkins started and threw for 116 yards, including a 38-yard touchdown pass to Trey Griffey with 3 minutes and 40 seconds left in the first half. Midway through the third quarter, Arizona down 17-7. Rich Rod put Anu Solomon at quarterback, and it didn't go so well. Wearing a brace on his left knee, he was taken out after three incomplete passes that were chucked out of bounds. Solomon's pass is incomplete. McCaffrey had 169 yards, 23 carries, four catches for 27 yards, including an 18-yard catch-and-run touchdown. Still winless in conference play, let's hope a bowl game is still possible for our Arizona Wildcats after next week when they play at Washington State. Reporting to you for UATV, this is sports reporter Simone McCarthy. Also taking on Stanford was Thursday night's women's soccer when they hosted them. Sports reporter David Conger has the game recap. It was a perfect night here in Tucson, Arizona for Pac-12 women's soccer with the UA Wildcats versus the Stanford Cardinals. It seemed like it was a good first half for the UA Wildcats until a late goal by Stanford, which really ruined the whole momentum for the UA Wildcats, especially during the second half, giving up three goals. In the end, it was number three ranked Stanford defeating the Wildcats 4-0. In the first half, we really wanted it more. And, you know, like in the past, you know, we've done really, really well. So I think, you know, our energy was there and then I don't know what happened in the second half. They just showed up and they were ready to play. We didn't give our best effort out there. I mean, what is it like? Things clicking. Yeah, the first half we definitely had some chances and uh, the game plan tactically looked like it could be effective. Uh, we just were going to have to grind through some moments where they had possession and uh, hope when the chances came our way that we could bury them and it didn't happen on the night and even at halftime we still felt like we were still in the game we was just going to take maximum maximum effort uh, and that kind of died off when they scored the second goal. In the end it was a rough night for the Wildcats but they're looking forward to the Sunday morning senior game against the California Berkeley Golden Bears. That's a wrap from Tucson. Go Wildcats! After a tough loss from Stanford, women's soccer would look to bounce back Sunday night facing California. Sports reporter Courtney Rice has all the highlights. The Arizona Wildcats took on the California Bears at Murphy Field at Mulcahy Soccer Stadium for the seniors' final game at home. The game started early as Wildcat junior midfielder Gabby Stoyan had an unassisted shot from outside the 18 in the second minute of the game. Cal came back in the first half with a successful penalty kick in the 29th minute by midfielder Kelly Fitzgerald. Callie Chrysler ended up winning the game for the Cats by putting the ball in the back of the net in the 109th minute. It was just running. Someone did like a 1-2, I believe. I hit it at the keeper probably as hard as I could, and it rebounded, and Callie was there to put it in the net. So when I was down, I was laying on the ground looking up, and I saw it hit the net, and I just was like, oh my gosh, like, come to me, we're going to fall on the ground. I think getting, I knew I needed to get in there, and I didn't really, like, it came to me, I didn't, it wasn't the prettiest goal, but it just, I knew I had to get my body on it some way to deflect it in. 
Arizona had plenty of shots on goal as Cal's goalie Emily Boyd had 12 saves compared to Wildcat goalie Laney Burdett with only four saves. You know, it, it would have been easy today to tie or lose that game and say, well, you worked hard and you worked hard again, but uh, to work hard and get the result is, is really the important thing. And The Wildcats definitely seem to have some motivation going into their next game. And just going into like the end of our season, even though we're not making the tournament, I think to end our season on two wins would be great. And so I think going to ASU, it gives us a lot of like excitement and motivation to beat them, our rivalry, and end on a great, a great note. The Arizona Wildcats came in a close finish against the Cow Bears this Sunday afternoon in double overtime, 2-1. to one. The seniors have their final home game of the season here in Tucson, but their final game of the season will be in ASU this Friday. This is UATV3 sports reporter Courtney Rice. Country Championship took place Friday morning. Sports reporter Alec White was out there and caught all the action. It only happens once every 12 years here in Tucson as the Arizona Wildcats hosted the 2016 Pac-12 Cross Country Championships at Randolph Golf Course. Both the men's and women's team competed in the event with the title on the line. The women's 6,000 meter run was the first race of the day where Arizona's Addie Zariner took the lead early on. She was unable to sustain the pace and was overtaken by runners from Washington and Colorado. The finish was one of the closest in recent Pac-12 memory as Washington's Amy Eloise Neal beat out Colorado's Aaron Clark by .4 seconds. Zariner would finish 10th for the Wildcats, earning her a trophy. I got the chance to speak with some of the top runners in the Pac-12 to see how they enjoyed coming to Arizona for the championship race. I felt a lot more um, almost at home in these conditions and in this atmosphere. Um, I loved coming down to Arizona and race and I just felt so welcomed by everyone here and I got to you know, meet some great people like Carlos Villarreal and um, Danny Jones. And so um, just being down here, I think it just made things more familiar um, and more like homey, I guess. I love it. Um, I came out here and looked at the course and it reminded me of high school. I love being back here. Not necessarily Tucson, but I love being back in Arizona. It was really exciting. The men's race was dominated by Oregon senior Edward Cheswick, who became the first athlete ever to be a four-time conference champion. At the conclusion of the meet, I spoke with Fred Harvey, Arizona's director of cross country and track and field to talk about the significance of hosting a conference championship. Anytime we get a chance uh, to, to host a conference or a national championship or any type of championship uh, you know, in Tucson, it's always a big thing. As, you know, it, it, it brings the best of the best uh, competition in. And cross country, you're literally looking at, uh, on, the, on the women's side, you had seven teams or nine teams, seven teams that are in the top 25 in the country. So you have the best competition in the country you know, going on right here in Tucson. The Arizona women's team would place eighth overall and the men's team would come in ninth but it would be Colorado's men's and women's team who would take home the conference championship for the second consecutive year. For UATV Sports Channel 3, I'm Alec White. Well, that was the recap of games from last week. This week, Arizona football heads to Washington State in hopes of getting their first road win. U of A women's volleyball has a big week ahead of them. You can catch them in action Wednesday night against USC at home as well as Friday night where they will take on UCLA. Best of luck to women's soccer as they head up north to wrap up their season against the Sun Devils. Game time set for 3 p.m. But that'll do it here for Wildcats Sports. As always, I'm Brandon Mejia. Join us next week for recaps and more. Don't change the channel. We'll be right back.
doing? Working. Continue. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Toby Schmidt. And I'm Michael Hernandez. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Sarina Nacuarrate. And I'm Danielle Kerb. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Max Allen. And I'm Jackie Kent. Welcome to Wildcast. Welcome. Welcome. And welcome. Welcome. And welcome to another edition of Wildcast. Don't change the channel. You're watching UN TV. Yay, cats! Last week, we asked which homecoming event you were most looking forward to. About 50% who were, excuse my voice, <clears throat> about 50% who responded said the football game was their favorite event. Nearly 40% said it was the bonfire. The homecoming parade received 13% of the votes, and homecoming court crowning received no votes. To celebrate tonight, we'd like to know what is your favorite part of Halloween. Let us know on our Twitter page at UATV3, and make sure to give us a like on Facebook as well. We'll see you next week for another edition of Wildcast. Be safe and have a happy Halloween. Yes. Happy Halloween, Wildcats. <laughs>